In today's video, I'm going to be covering a new medication that was just approved in 2022 known as Terlavaz. The generic name for this medication is Terlapressin. So to start, what is Terlavaz used to treat? So this medication is indicated to be used in the treatment of hepatorenal syndrome, which is when the kidneys stop working well in patients who have serious liver problems. Now before a patient was to begin using Terlavaz, there are some precautions that should be mentioned. This medication should be avoided in patients who have severe cardiovascular conditions, cerebrovascular disease, or ischemic disease. Ischemic refers to restricted or reduced blood flow. It should be noted that adverse reactions such as respiratory failure or ischemia may put patients in a position where they're no longer candidates for a liver transplant. So we should always consider the benefits versus the risk when administering Terlavaz in patients with high prioritization for liver transplant. It should be noted that this medication may cause fetal harm. And lastly, serious or fatal respiratory failure has occurred in patients using this medication and patients with fluid overload would be at an increased risk. Now aside from the precautions, there are two contraindications to this medication or reasons patients would not be able to use Terlavaz. If a patient had hypoxia or worsening respiratory symptoms, they would not be able to use this medication. Or if a patient had ongoing coronary, peripheral, or mesenteric ischemia. Mesenteric ischemia would be a lack of blood flow or restricted blood flow to your small or large intestine. Now let's talk dosing. So for hepatorenal syndrome, we would start off with an initial dose of 0.85 milligrams given intravenously in a slow bolus over the course of two minutes every six hours on days one through day three. On day four, if the serum creatinine has decreased by 30% from baseline, we would repeat the same dosage. On day four, if the serum creatinine has decreased by less than 30%, we would increase the dose to 1.7 milligrams intravenously every six hours. Also on day four, if the serum creatinine remains at baseline, so unchanged, we would discontinue therapy. In terms of duration of therapy, we would do this for a maximum of 14 days or 24 hours following two readings of serum creatinine that are both less than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. And these two measurements have to be drawn at least two hours apart. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using Terlavaz, so I'll go over some of those here now. Abdominal pain may happen 19.5% of the time, and about 13% of patients may experience diarrhea. 16% may experience nausea, and 12.5% may experience dyspnea, or difficulty breathing. A more serious side effect, respiratory failure, may happen 15.5% of the time. And as we mentioned in the precautions, some people may also experience ischemia. And that's all we're going to talk about today with the medication Terlavaz or Terlapressin. Take care.